Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Today we are going to be unboxing the largest tool that I have ever purchased. We're going to be taking a look at it, going through all the setup that it takes to get it up and running, doing some calibration on it, and we're going to go over every little bit here on Tinker with Tools. So let's get into it. <music> So once you get the saw, it does come from the store in one single box. It's 113 pounds, a little heavy to lift by yourself. Inside you do have a separate box for the stand. This one wasn't too bad to move around. And I have to say, all the stand components do feel really high quality. That's one thing I was impressed by. It definitely is heavier duty than the, than the previous saw I had, that cobalt one. Get everything laid out here. And the first thing you're going to do is grab the two halves uh, of the legs extend the legs out, and then they actually just slide together. One side's a little bit wider than the other. Slide those together, and then it's just two screws that kind of lock them in place. It is threaded through both sides, and so that does make it nice. I'm actually making use of the DeWalt 12-volt brushless screwdriver here. Going to have to do a video on that someday because it's an awesome tool. Once you get the two sides put together, I've still got the legs extended up, but then you're just going to attach the axle to one end. Um, some of the placement of these bolts was a little bit less ideal to get to. I had that M12 ratchet out and it just proved to be a little bit too big to get into some of the tighter places, especially on the next couple of bolts. But we did get the wheels put on. Uh, they went on pretty easily. The instructions, the instructions are okay. The actual um, organization of the screws in the bags very clear that was excellent so the packaging was really good just the instructions sometimes were a little vague or didn't zoom out on the pictures enough to really make use of it this going on now is going to be what's called the kickstand and this is what when you have it stood up on its side will actually just help support it in addition to those two wheels so it just goes on the end with the wheels um, there's four bolts that connect it together it's a little bit awkward to get it put in place. The top two bolts are really tied up next to that bar, but once you get it on, it actually goes together pretty easily. Um, everything's very rigid, um, nice strong frame. A uh, lot of confidence is inspired by putting it together because you get to see just how heavy duty the different components are. The wheels look like they're cheap plastic, but they're actually pretty heavy duty. And that was something that I actually appreciated seeing. So then we're gonna flip it up on its end here. And on the opposite side of the kickstand and the wheels, you're actually gonna be attaching the handle. There's two separate positions you can put it in, uh, kind of a more extended version or this more compact version is what I went with. You just basically have three holes on each side of the handle. You need to line up two of them and get them put in with four bolts. Once that is done, we are going to get the saw actually up on the table here in a second. And then it's time to actually mount the saw uh, to the stand. It does go on pretty quick. There's just four total bolts that hold it on. They are nice and you know strong bolts and all that. So it does it does seem like it's going to stay on there really nice. Uh, but it, it does come on or off pretty quickly. They do mention to put it on a non-marring surface. Figured this MDF was probably going to be sufficient. And then you just line up the holes. And you just go ahead and drive um, these bolts through and make sure you get the washers in the right place and then just the nuts go on the other side. Um, the side over here with the front of the saw was a little bit harder to get the bolts into place. There's just a lot of stuff in the way. It's up really tight against the front of the saw. The back of the saw, however, really good clearance and you can obviously get right in there. And so then once those are on, it is time to get it on its side, got it down off the table, and then you're just going to go ahead and extend the legs. Once you've got those legs extended, um, it's that moment of truth when you tip it up. It's a, a little iffy, but once you get it upright, it's actually very sturdy, and you can tell the stand is made to last. All right, All right so the first thing I'm gonna do now that we've got it propped up is we are actually going to be changing the blade. What comes on here is a DeWalt 24 tooth real rough framing blade. I'm sure for that type of stuff, it's actually pretty nice, but the 
kind of stuff I'm going to be doing with the table saw is going to be not fine woodworking, but finer woodworking. And so, so I'm actually going to be putting on this Diablo combination blade. It's a 50 tooth, 10 inch blade. Price wise, it was actually pretty good, pretty competitive. Um, and it kind of gives me hopefully the best of both worlds. So we are going to go ahead and get the blade changed. So first thing I had already unlocked that. So you unlock that, pop this out, and then they include these two wrenches and then just pop one of these on the one side, find where it's going to lock in and then break that loose. I had already loosened it once before a little bit. So, and then just as simple as take that off. Do not drop the nut down in the saw. I'm sure you could get it, but why put yourself through that? Then take off that almost like washer. I'm sure there's probably a better name for it. And then the blade actually comes off. All right, so the new blade just goes on. And then on the washer portion and then back on with the nut. It does have an arbor long enough to be able to accept a data stack. And that's one thing that I missed so much on that last saw was the ability to be able to do dados and maybe start to up the joinery game just a little bit with what I'm doing. So I'm very much looking forward to um, being able to do that with this saw. And then that actually will just go right back on. All right, so the fence initially came stored under there. You just unhook it and then it comes over here and you just slide it on to that lock or that nut and drop it down into place. And then it is set and ready to go. And then you've got the handle under here. We'll get you a better picture of that that allows you to lock the fence into place or to unlock it. So you can't actually just move the fence around by hand, but the other main reason for getting this fence was the rack and pinion. Um, the rack and pinion fence that allows you both the fine adjustment on here. All right. So moved it all the way up to the blade, check it over here and we are right on zero. So that is good. Now let's go ahead and check the blade for square or that is definitely good enough for what I'm doing. There is really nothing there. So last thing we need to do is check the table for flatness. So this is just a little 24 inch box level and we're just going to go along, take a look at it. And to be honest, it is flat enough for what I'm doing and I really can't see anything underneath there. All right. So we found the miter gauge. Like I said, it was just over in one of those little bo last boxes that I hadn't opened up. As you put it in, little bit of side to side slop. I don't see any way to really adjust that. It's probably not the end of the world. If you're going to be using a miter gauge a lot, I think there are nicer examples that you can pick up online. And if ultimate precision is something that you need on a saw, then you should probably invest in something that will give you ultimate precision. Um, Mark Spagnolo, the wood whisperer did a great review recently, insanely in depth into all the different ones. I've got my eye on one of the Incra ones, should I ever go that route. So for this last one, we're just gonna check if it's at 90 or if it's running at 90 with this. I mean, as near as I can tell, it is. There's no real detents here that would enable you to set this at a perfect 90. So like I said, once again, I don't think this is the tool for ultimate precision but it appears to be set up just about as good as I could hope for. All right, here goes the first cut. So first off, whether it's the blade or the saw, the cut 
that came off that is pretty darn incredible. Um, I am very pleased with how nice that was. The blade, uh, this was not a difficult cut. This is a piece of half inch cedar, so real soft wood. But with the older cobalt saw, one of the things I always noticed is it always struggled to make, um, you could just feel the motor bogged down. And with this one, it honestly felt like nothing was there. Um, when I check the actual width of the cut, the fence system appears to be very accurate. I'm not saying you should never measure and make sure that it is accurate. It's just nice to have the confidence in the equipment that it's going to work the way you want it to. Um, that blade is incredible. Um, all right, so after setting up the table saw, let's answer a couple of quick questions. First off, why a new table saw? Well, I mentioned back in my first five tools video that the table saw was one thing that I would recommend getting the nicest table saw that you can get or you can fit into your budget. It's one of those tools where a little bit of money goes a long way towards giving you a much higher quality product. My first table saw was that cobalt table saw. The fence was flimsy. It had a tendency to try and tip over when I was using it. It would get bogged down into simple cuts, even like a two by four, just doing a rip cut. And so ultimately it just wasn't the right saw for me that was going to get the job done for what I wanted to do. Now this DeWalt table saw, I spent a lot of time researching. I went back and forth between the Bosch, the Metabo HPT, the corded version and the cordless version. I looked at the, the less powerful or smaller blade size of the DeWalt table saw, the eight and a quarter. I even looked at other brands um, and maybe even going to like a contractor saw. Ultimately with the size of shop that I have, we're dealing in a shop that is a, a single bedroom basically in a basement. And so it's not real big, there's not a lot of room. I need it to be portable so I can move it out of the way when I don't need it. And ultimately one of the contractor saws was the right one for me. Tamar from 3x3 Customs really gave me a lot of confidence to go with the saw. I believe she has the prior model to this one that I could actually get something that was capable of doing what I wanted to do or progressing a little bit with me from where I am right now. And the fence on this one just gives me a lot more confidence that I can make quick, accurate, and repeatable cuts. So when it comes down to it, I'm very happy with the saw. So we're gonna be putting the saw to use in my shop over the next couple of weeks, months, hopefully even years, trying to get a feel for what its capabilities are, where it does have some limitations. <clears throat> if there are any, I'll be sure to share those with you. But ultimately, I wanna be able to do some more projects on this channel as well not just the tool reviews, but actually show the practical application of using these tools so you can see how they get used or how they can be used and kind of get a feel for what different tools will do in different applications. So thanks for joining me here today. If you have any questions about the saw, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear your insights if you have this saw and any tips or tricks that you have found that have made this saw more usable for you. If you don't mind, also, if you have a second, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, tag the bell notification icon so that you can see any content that I put out in the future and can be able to, to know when it is there and when that content is waiting for you. One of the things that I like most is when I know that there's a tool that I want, when there's a timely review for it, that means a lot to me. So I hope to be able to do the same thing for you. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time on Tinker with Tools.